And so it has come to this. Yes, this is the second part of our Mad King playthrough in CK3, a game of throws. And I said if we get 100 likes on the last video, then I would do a second part. And we smashed that goal. So thank you very much for the support, guys. So today we are here to play the Mad King once again and secure the Targaryen dynasty. We've only got six living members right now and predominantly they're all children apart from me. So this is going to be a really, really tough job. And in fact, I was thinking about trying to change the succession so that it was uh, Viserys on the throne. But it doesn't look like that is going to be possible right now. Unfortunately, we don't have enough crown authority. We are a uh, disgraced... <laughs> King, <laughs> fantastic. So, without further ado, let's press play and let's see what happens. Uh. This is fucked. This is not right. This is not cool. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> well, uh, that's a great start, isn't it, guys? Uh, I literally just pressed play and then we died. Um... Right then, fantastic. He died of heart failure, cursed with a disturbed mind. He was known throughout the lands as a raving lunatic. King Aegon ascends the throne. A new king. Long live the king and the Grand Maester of the Iron Throne. Oh, don't play just yet. So we are betrothed to Rhaenys over here. But I'm hoping we can try and get some nice alliances. Uh, potentially by marrying off a few of these people. And I'm going to marry Daenerys to Littlefinger. That's big brain play. It's big brain play. Unfortunately, he won't accept a matrilineal marriage. But she's going to come of age in a long time. So there's plenty of time to try and get rid of Littlefinger along the way. Because we're going to need alliances if this is going forward. Because I'm sure factions are going to start straight away. Let's look for alliance power. We've got gold guard heights. We don't need that. I'm thinking more sort of like the north or the reach would be a good uh, a good alliance in here. How about Loris? Oh, Loris. Let's uh, arrange a marriage. You and Danis. How do you accept? Yeah, and even a matrilineal marriage there as well. Fantastic. That is glorious. Now let's choose our new council. <laughs> Remember, guys, we're going to be trying to like role play this a little bit, but mainly just trying to survive. Uh, and we could get our hand of the king being Walder. I don't think that's a good idea. I think we want our uncle, where Prince Duran, if we can find him. So here he is. We've got him now. So let's assign Prince Duran as our hand of the king. He is my uncle as well, which is fantastic. Uh, Chancellor-wise, why can't we... Uh, yeah, they're already taking some sort of thing. I think in terms of that, I want Littlefinger to be steward. Chancellor, potentially we'll get Mace to be Chancellor, and then over here we'll get Siegfried, and then we'll get Sandor Clegane <laughs> as well. And then maybe in here we want Walder. He does have 29. It's not quite as good as Varys, but it's uh, it's still pretty good. So the big problem we're going to have is that Viserys, as soon as he comes of age, is going to have factions made for him. So... We really need to secure alliances everywhere. And that's why we've been marrying off different people. How about Elia of Dawn? I'm not sure about the Riverlands. Hoping potentially a Lannister so that they can't join any. Oh, not a Lannister, Clegane over here. But it doesn't look like that's going to be possible. So obviously we're uh, allied with Dawn. The Stormlands is unfortunately in a big war right now. Big Brienne is in here and she is losing a war for someone else's claim so i don't think she's gonna win that very well but how about the boys over here ramsey snow unfortunately doesn't have a marriage yet so why so we were on stewardship focus but i think in order to survive, in order to be strong, I want kind of a diplomatic and military character. Fortunately, we are bossy, so it's going to be better to go for a martial character. And for Rhaenys, we'll go diplomacy 
as well. Now, in terms of education, this is quite hard. We need to find someone who's pretty good. Our mother is okay, but these education traits are not great. Could get varies. <laughs> that's not, not great. But we could also get Lord Lothar the Lame. I think that's, that's probably quite good. But he's deceitful, callous, gregarious. Gregarious and patient are both great for diplomacy, but not fantastic for anything else. So... Well, we've got Luther here, who's chaste, arrogant, and zealous. No, that's definitely not something we want. Oh, dear. We've not got many different things, have we? Uh, Varys is deceitful, ambitious, gregarious, and patient. I think, you know, apart from deceitful, those are great traits. So let's both be educated. <laughs> well, you can be educated by uh, the High Septum, I guess. That's fine. <laughs> So now Viserys has come of age, so it's just really important that we uh, <laughs> that we try and uh, keep him on side. But it's going to be very, very hard. So as soon as we're 12, which is it's not, not yet. <laughs> we're not quite 12. We're 10 now. <laughs> we'll try and sway him and try and keep him out of the factions. Ah, uh, the faction's already started, guys. <laughs> it's not fantastic. It's a lot of people in uh, the, uh, the Crownlands. But Mace, come on, Mace, that's terrible. I'm gonna try and bribe him to get him out of the faction. But oh my God, look how many people there are. We need to try and get rid of people. Mace is gone, but has he joined in this one as well? I'm also thinking Roos will try and afford to send him a gift as well. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is tough. Even with this plus 17, obviously our, f our father, our grandfather, should I say, he gave these uh, these places to all the people. So, you know, <laughs> so they were really happy with him, even though he was mental. But apart from but everyone else, <laughs> now that he's died, you know, they're not happy with me. God damn it, Mace. God damn it. Why? Why? Okay, so the factions are just going up and down right now. But luckily, we do have a big Lord Paramount Mace improving relations with everyone. Which, even though he's part of these factions, is slowly but surely increasing the relation of everyone and kicking people out. But I'm not, you know, I'm not holding off yet. I think they might fire. We just need to come of age. That is the main thing. If we can come of age... Everything will be so much better. And Walder Frey has died. No. Our absolute ally. Our fantastic ally. Why lying for? Now I can make Roos <laughs> into the spy master. Um, I mean, <laughs> it will make him a bit happier, surely. Surely. But he has 36 intrigue. That's kind of scary. So I'm hoping he doesn't join any factions against us <laughs> i'm hoping he doesn't make any plots against us god damn it god damn it prince duran my goddamn uncle my uncle oh fuck i can't believe you've done this has joined the 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 liberty faction against me surely not come on prince duran that sounds a bit extreme. That doesn't sound realistic at all. So our traits have been coming on pretty nicely, apart from intrigue, of course. But that does uh, is because we are both honest and compassionate as well. So we're not going to have much dread with this life, but we are going to be very diplomatic. 15 diplomacy already, and we're also diligent, which is fantastic. A really, really good trait. Hopefully... We can mix that in with a good martial education as well. So we'll have a good mix of stewardship, martial, and diplomacy. But I guess we'll see. We need to survive first. <laughs> so the factions are slowly but surely starting to, uh, to wane a little bit. And that is all important right now. Uh, of course, Siegfried wants the dissolution. <laughs> Goddamn Iron Islanders, why are you part of the Seven Kingdoms? God damn it. Just want to sow chaos and destruction, don't you? But anyway, yeah, we are slowly but surely making our way down the factions in terms of getting them rid of members. But they can pop up anytime. As soon as Mace 
rejoins one of these factions, it pops over, and then he jumps out for a little bit, then he jumps back in, so, <laughs> I don't know, but, with our good diplomacy trait, we are starting to get all our vassals into liking us now, which is fantastic. <laughs> so, Lord Various, Lord Various brought me to the woods to play with a bow, that doesn't sound ominous at all, does it? But, it has led us to become ambitious now. So, we have some glorious, glorious traits. Not a lot of stress loss, of course. <laughs> Lots of stress gain and not much dread. But we are a pretty good character already. We just need a good martial trait in there when we come of age as well. So, Rhaenys has come of age and she is, in fact, a charismatic negotiator. She's also patient honest, brave, and gluttonous. Actually, some great traits, apart from gluttonous, of course. But yeah, great diplomacy, not great in anything else. So we're really going to have to be wary of our intrigue when it comes down to it, because, you know, we're going to have to have a good <laughs> master of whisperers, <laughs> because, yeah, we, we have such low intrigue that it's going to be very hard um, not to get murdered. <laughs> So apparently, I was drinking alone in a tavern. 15-year-old king that could get murdered at any time. Just drinking alone in a tavern, you know. Down uh, down in flea market. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> doesn't know who I am with my silver hair. I quickly make my way over and spend the rest of the night drinking together with a 32-year-old. With a 32-year-old. <laughs> <clears throat> He becomes my friend. Oh my god. Right, that's a bit weird, I'm not going to lie. In terms of the crown that we are taking, we are going to take the crown of Aegon the Fourth because it gives us vassal opinion. We're also going to wear red rain, which we can't, you know, use quite yet. We're nearly of age, and we're also getting Rhaegar's armor as well, our father's armor. And I think, looking at our stats, we've done our father pretty proud, I would say. But let's see how we do with our education trait in... A month or so. So we have come of age. I have lived up to everyone's expectations and learned more than most. My nightly training alongside this has proceeded acceptably and I have fought a few uppity peasants with some success. <laughs> As I take my first steps into adulthood, I find myself reminiscing about some of the people who have made an impact on the man I have become. The friendship I said with Wendemir meant a lot to me when we were both young and to still have him by my side means a lot. When you were both young, he was 32 when you met him, bro. 32 and you were 15. <laughs> I had some memorable times with John Quill. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We we uh, you know had a little uh, had a little crush on a on a peasant girl at some point as well. <laughs> so we are now. Let's have a look at our stats. We are now, of course, a skilled tactician. We're a flexible leader, and we're a trained fighter. So we've got some pretty fat prowess. Uh, it would be nice to get that up a bit higher. Um, and yeah. We've got some good stats. We do really have some good stats. 14 martial, 16 diplomacy, and we're going to get that up even higher. So show Lord Arrowic. So right now, we're basically going to have about a million homage <laughs> requests and petitions coming in as we sit the Iron Throne. So that's going to be interesting because we're going to lose a lot of money through that. Everyone petitions for us to build new holdings. And yeah, it's it's a bit annoying, I'm not going to lie. So, but at least the uh, the pledges give us a lot of money and renown anyway. In terms of our patron aspect, let's go for the father. Gives us a bit of extra popular opinion, but an extra diplomacy at the expense of our intrigue, which, you know, our intrigue is, is not good anyway. So, <laughs> there's no point keeping that singular one intrigue. And we, of course, can marry our, our sister. Oh, God. The Targaryens, man. The Targaryens. What did you expect? And it is glorious. We have been knighted. We now have the trait knight. And Barristan Selmy himself will knight us. Of course, a good friend to Rhaegar. And hopefully, he'll be a good friend to me as well. So let's hold our first court as King Aegon VI. Fantastic. Let's go. Gesture for the first line to approach. 
It seems my vassal, the hound, has been nursing a temper while awaiting an audience. My lord, I cannot abide your tolerance of unbelievers like Lord Paramount Roos in the realm, even amidst the nobility. The seven who are one made as his demands. Are you okay, hound? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. I'm sure you, you really don't care about this. Um, I judge a man by their quality. By the old gods I know. You convert to old gods. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I think all faiths are welcome in the Seven Kingdoms is the right way to go. We are very diplomatic as well. Improved knowledge and mapping of your land will certainly increase its prosperity. What are you doing, Littlefinger? What sort of plot is this? 500! Ooh! I think we're going to take that. You can see. And uh, my mother, Elia, shows me a page filled with unfamiliar symbols, in insisting on its legibility. I've developed a written language specifically for the women of the court, since the letters are mostly taught to men. If you allow it, I will begin teaching the ladies at once. The language of women. I mean, extra diplomacy and learning. Thank you very much. My business here is done. <laughs> Glorious. With Prince Duran next to us, our uncle. But of course, he did join a faction against us, the dirty bastard. <laughs> so a vassal to remember. Lord Paramount Mace and Lord Paramount Roost. The two primary members of the factions that really tipped them over the edge. <laughs> These guys. Yes. Really, um, you know, I'm going to dedicate my court artifact to them to make them happy. Hopefully that will remove them from the factions now. So how much does Roos like us now? Roos loves us! Come on, Roos! What a boy! Fantastic! And after all this time, Siegfried of the Iron Islands is still <laughs> wants to dissolute the, uh, <laughs> the kingdom. What a man. I, I respect that, honestly. But I think what we need to start doing is trying to claim some of these lesser counties in our duchy here. We are in the uh, High Lordship of King's Landing. So taking, say, Shinebridge is probably something that we want to do. And just to shore up our power base around here, get a bit more power, a bit more troops, just to make sure we're good. And we're also trying to kill Lord Peter. It's not going fantastically well. <laughs> So it is time for you to go down to the seven hells, Peter Baelish, where you belong. Please, let this happen. Let's go. We're also got our wife pregnant. Fantastic. No! Of course he had a food taster. Of course. I need a new plan. Let's go. So in terms of the route we're going, we're going full marshal to have as many troops as possible, just in case of any of those rebellions. We need to show strength. Really, don't we? And we're going to go down for the Overseer perk. Bit of extra stewardship, bit of extra marshal, more control growth, and loads of good traits in here, as you can see. Loads of little good traits. Good for control, good for ruling. And yeah, we're, we're definitely taking this route down here. And then we might look at potentially going down a diplomatic one after we've done that. Maybe August, uh, or maybe Patriarch as well. But we shall see, we shall see. Oh, we have some fantastic traits here on offer. We've got Logistician, of course, a really, really good trait. Same as Military Engineer as well, a fantastic trait. And then we've also got Forder, which is a great trait as well. But I think in terms of what we want to go for, probably Military Engineer. Get those sieges done quickly. And we have had a son, and he is comely as well. Very nice. And of course, we're going to name him after ourselves. Agar. <laughs> no, let's go for Rhaegar instead. Let's go for our father's name. You will be named Rhaegar. He was the king that never was after he was killed by Robert, of course. He was slain by Lord Robert of the Stormland. So, in honor of him, we have Prince Rhaegar once again. This time, surely Lord Peter cannot get away from our scheme. 95% chance. Let's go. No! The scullery maid helped herself to some wine! God damn it! Surely he's, uh, he's a little bit scared right now. So, I've commissioned a poem. 
<laughs> it's not as I expected. The poem is about how glorious I am while I sit on my throne and do absolutely nothing. After all, if the royal rear moves too far afield, where shall we direct all those wishing to kiss it? <laughs> I am fucking fuming! Mega, mega fucking fuming! Um, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Ingrate, of course. We're going to say that. Let's have a look at what, they're, what that actually does. <laughs> so, it's not exactly brilliant. Tales of King Aegon. Monthly diplomacy lifestyle. But, I mean, it's better than nothing, right? It's better than nothing. How disappointing has Daenerys Stormborn turned out? She's trusting, deceitful as well. Just zealous. And an intricate web weaver. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Look at those stats as well. What a disappointment, I'm not going to lie. So third time's a charm. Come on, 95% chance. Let's go. Let's see what happens. No! How? Lord Paramount Peter survived, apparently using his lavender jade pendant. What? So he's killed the assassin with a pendant. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the assassin surely had a dagger or an axe or something. That's, that's bollocks. Oh, a call an ambulance. Call an ambulance. But not for me. Is it like scripted so that Littlefinger can't die or something? Three 95% chances in a row. Come on. That is a joke. And I think I'm going to break the betrothal. With him as well. We can use Daenerys for something a little bit better. So we can actually get married into the Cleganes. And it's he's only the uh, the second in line for succession as well. So I'm thinking we go for that. And, uh, you know, once our scheme against Littlefinger's done, <laughs> we'll try and kill this guy as well. <laughs> I mean, I said it was going to be diplomatic and military. And our intrigue is terrible. But... A bit of scheming's got to go on. We grew up in King's Landing, right? We grew up in King's Landing. It's got to happen to secure the dynasty. So unfortunately, right now, we are struggling so much with stress. With trying to murder Littlefinger, it's really putting our stress up because we're compassionate and honest. And it's really, really bad. There's not much we can do. We are athletic, which does help. But we've been working off stress every time it's become available. So I really need to get that monthly income up. Then we'll host a lavish feast, and hopefully that will help us out. But our stress is a big problem right now. So now it's time to use the spiders on <laughs> Lord Peter. Fourth time. Come on, 490. Well, one non-95% chance and two 95% chances. And he's still not died, surely. Yes! Yes! Come on! Glorious, glorious, glorious. Now... Now we have the veil of Aaron, uh, which is pretty cool. I uh, I lost the bloody gate to myself. I inherited the uh, the pendant of him, the one that he used to murder my <laughs> my own assassin. <laughs> ah, brilliant! Well, um, yeah, let's let's stick that on. <laughs> Still covered in blood, I hope. <laughs> Fantastic. Hide of the renowned Fox of Browndon. Um, yeah, okay. Fantastic. That's, that's okay. <laughs> but with these titles, what are we going to do? That is the, um, the main, the main thing. And where are they? Like, where are our actual titles? Just the Eerie, is it? Um, so let's, uh, see whether we can, you know, give it to Daenerys, I'm gonna say. First of all, though, let's get Daenerys married off. That's going to be the most important thing. Oh, she is betrothed to Lord Sandor of the Westerlands. Problem is, if we give her the veil now as well, that might be a little bit OP. The same thing if we give Princess Daenys that as well. However, we do have Viserys here, who has Dragonstone. Uh... It's tough. It's tough. We could give it to our own son, Prince Rhaegar, but... Mm, problem is, if we gave it to my son, I think, you know, everyone's gonna rebel against him. I also don't really fancy giving it to Viserys because... Yeah, 
You know, he's got that claim on the Iron Throne. It's the same with the girls as well. Of course, they've got the uh, a press claim on the Iron Throne. Um, but I think Daenys is probably the best option we've got there. I think she's going to be okay. It would be ideal if we'd had another kid. So what I might do is just wait around a little bit longer until we get another child. And then hopefully... Then we can give it to our second child. And they will be indebted to us and not press the claim against us when our next guy becomes king. So it's now time to hold court for the second time. And we've got all the boys of the realm around here. We've got Balon Swan. We've got the, uh, Arthur, the Sword of the Morning Dane. He's still alive. Only 44, which is pretty good. Jaslyn Bywater, the, the Smith. We've got Lothar, the Lay, my courtier. J Jeremy Riker, you know. The High Septum over here just looking into nowhere. My wife, of course. And Prince Duran, my uncle. How old is he? 55. He looks a bit bowed at the minute. He's a great character. Look at those stats. Fantastic character. But let's hold court. Let us see what the petitioners bring for us this time. The peasant in front of me seems about to explode with incitement. The, my lord, the miracles, the holiness. We have been blessed. <laughs> I finally get the gist of it. She wants me to sponsor the cult of a local saint who has recently died. Errold was a miracle, maker of life, known for changing the wine he drank into water and prophesizing the end of the world. His tomb is attracting devoted visitors. Um, yeah, we could make another temple holding. I think that'd probably be quite good. Uh, and yeah, I, yeah, let's go for that straight away. Lord Donald of Deerfield claims that the Lordship of Point Square held by Lord Aaron is, uh, and sworn directly to you is part of their de jure territory. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. That's that's good uh, Good management of the realm. I'm faced with tighter phrase, sad eyes, which grow larger and more pitiful as her mother, Rosalind, gently ushers her towards my throne. King, she laments, the girl has been at Edwin's court with no one to watch over her since the death of her dear papa. Please look to her future. Uh, yeah, you could become Bryce's ward. There we are. Fantastic. Another successful court that has been done. And what do we have? Oh, yeah, we've got the, uh, we've got the hide of a renowned fox of Brownden. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I think it's time to host a lavish feast and invite all our glorious <laughs> paramounts of the realm to, uh, to join. We've still got Edwin. We've still got the Cleganes in the Westerlands. We do have the uh, the Tyrells in the Reach, the uh, Martells in Dawn. In the Stormlands, it is Estamont now because Brienne got overthrown. And, of course, Bolton's in the north. And we will have a Targaryen in the Vale very soon when I have another child. <laughs> oh, we have a rampaging stag on a hunt trying to get rid of some stress. And, you know, hunting trophy would be quite nice for a bit of extra prestige. So let's try and slay the beast. Yes! We did it. What a glorious leader we are. Fantastic leader. We are an absolute beast of a character. I absolutely love it. Um, and, you know, if we look at our vassals, most of them are pretty happy, apart from, of course, the Iron Islands. But, you know, I don't think they're ever going to be happy. So so now we are trying to kill Tomard Clegane. A bit of a, you know, a bit more stress. <laughs> Never hurt anyone, right? And that would mean that then Lord Sander would be the next in line. And he is matrilineally married to Princess Daenerys, who's apparently 20, but still looks like a child. She looks tiny. Why is she so small? Um, and then hopefully, you know, it's only uh, 12 more years. And she'll be 32. Hopefully they can have a child. And then the Westerlands will be under the control of the Targaryens. We are really expanding our influence now. I even have a claim on dawn as well from my mother um but yeah i'm not going to attack uh dawn for that prince duran is a very uh very powerful man and yeah i don't want to attack him he is my uncle as well so <laughs> never a great idea uh but yeah prince duran the primary heir is princess Ariane, of course of dawn so hopefully she has a child at some point and then maybe we can look for a bit of a marriage there as well Unfortunately, our scheme was discovered, so we can't do that. We've just got to, you know, hope that something bad happens to him. Um, or potentially invite him to the Kingsguard when uh, the time comes. I think that might be the option. That's a nice little bit 
uh, way of getting rid of some of the claims that these people have. So we finally got a claim on Shinebridge Hall over here. So I think we're going to try and revoke it. There's not much chance that he will accept. Uh, but yeah, we can't, we, we're not going to be viewed as a tyrant if we do it. So let's do it. He is in a faction, so he's going to probably drag in a few of the people in the faction. But there we are. Rally the troops. There's only 3,000 3, men in there. Uh, and he's only married uh, to nine stars, which is, you know, pointless, really. And then that has brought us into the Old Town claim on the Lordship of Laurelich. I don't know how or why, but apparently it has. <laughs> but finally, we can use our glorious, you know, campaigning knowledge that we have put together to uh, to get some war done. So it's time for us to lead armies in battle like our father. We really want, you know, to become like our father, become a decent general, become a glorious man. Uh, and yeah, let's lead battles like our father and really try and live up to his name. Ah, uh, well, it seems our first war as king has gone, uh, you know, pretty well. So let's... Uh, uh, what's happened there? That should be our title, right? I'm so confused. There we are. The war's aftermath. Bring them before me. Lord Paramount Oliver Oakheart. Uh, I think it's time, you know, to send you to the wall, bro. <laughs> And uh, Lord Leighton of Old Town House Hightower, let's send you to the wall. Desmond of Crake Hall, let's send you to the wall. Uh, Templeton, we'll send you. We'll just send you all to the wall. They've defied my judgment again. Really, really, that's just so dumb of them. Come on, boys, how dumb can you get? Well, I guess we're marching all the way across Westeros then with our army. <laughs> Fantastic. Crowned as well. Glorious. A jolly old march for the boys, huh? Ah, oh, at last we have arrived. Very nice. Has he got any more troops? Yeah, he's got some troops over here, but we're just going to take his hometown and uh, destroy him. I really don't understand this old town war. I, I, I don't know what they're going for. I think they're going for this little bit of land over here, but... I don't know why it's fighting against me. Like, why are you fighting against me, bro? Like... <laughs> What's going on? But we're going to go smash them now anyway and see what happens. We don't have much supply down here, <laughs> but it's time to fight, boys. Time to fight the battle. We've not got great stats for the battle, but yeah. Oh, no. And now Barristan has died. Surely not. Big Barristan was died on the battlefield. What a decision this has been by Old Town. I will not show you mercy anymore, Hightower. And, uh, yeah, we'll probably take whoever's the best. Mr. Greenstone, there we are. And finally, another battle against the High Towers. Let's go. We've killed them once again. Fantastic. We've lost our headsman for it, but who cares about that, huh? Ah, uh, fighting them once again. Let's go. Lord Sando was, uh, Lord Paramount Sando was, was injured. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, and finally, we have won the war. Against the Cray Call. So let's take it. Let's do it. And let's disband these boys. It's going to take them a while to get home, but I don't care. It's fine. Oh, and now we have another son who is pure blooded as well, which is pretty good. Uh, and yeah, of course, we're going to call him uh, Aegon. Yep, after ourselves. And now we have a route into the Vale. He's zero years old, <laughs> but he is going to become the new Lord of the Vale. We'll educate him, of course, but yeah, the new Lord of the Vale, our own son. And the second war against the High Towers has been done. I keep the contested title. I'm, I'm sure I don't have this title, bro. Honestly. Like, it's in the reach. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> why are you fighting against me for it? But anyway, we have proven ourselves in battle now. Absolutely glorious. And we've got a load of money for that as well. All our armies will be disbanded. What a glorious, glorious start to our reign. 
And we also now have Shinebridge Hall as well. So that's another one that we have. But now it's time to try something a little bit risky. <laughs> Son, where are you, my son? My son, my nephew, my son and nephew. <laughs> uh, Prince Aegon, you deserve this. I know this might be a little bit scary in the future uh, when we get to our other uh, character, our second character, our third character, should I say, uh, Rhaegar, but... <laughs> We've got to shore up our power base right now. And hopefully they form a friendship rather than a rivalry <laughs> between the two sons. But I guess we'll see. Hopefully he's secure on that throne. And, you know, uh, we will uh, make sure that we have an alliance. How come we don't? I'm a claimant, so you won't, you won't accept my alliance, bro. Surely. We'll use the hook. There we are. You are now allied to me, so any problems that you have with factions, just call me in, bro. <laughs> call me in. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> Please don't be killed by some angry lords that don't like Targaryens on the throne. <laughs> and I think we can't educate our own son at the minute. So what we'll do, we'll send Daenerys to do it. Uh, so Daenerys, go and educate him. I don't want any of these filthy veilsmen doing it a true targaryen is the only way so we are 28 and we are already exalted upon men we are truly truly an absolute legend of a king already do we just need to survive keep the stability in the realm and that is our goal done i mean in terms of the amount of living members we're now up to 10 i'm hoping we can get up to you know around 30 and we will have secured the targaryen dynasty for quite some time you know, Paramount Aegon of the Vale, he is there as well. He is in place. I think we should find him a spouse eventually. Um, but for now, I think he's going to be good. Ideally, we want a female heir to something. Uh, maybe up in the north. Ramsay Snow doesn't even have a wife. So, you know, Roos, who is your primary heir? It's Domeric already. So if we could, you know... Get Gerana or Elena Bolton up here. It might be a good little alliance there. My son. Yeah. Hmm. It might be a good little alliance. He will have the veil in the north under his control. That's a bit too powerful for him, isn't it? Um, but yeah, we are really stabilizing this realm now. The realm is nice and stable. And I know it's probably not as entertaining as a big bad war. But it's taken a lot of work nonetheless. And it's quite hard to keep the realm this stable. Look how happy everyone is with us. No one dislikes us. Not even Siegfried anymore. Is Siegfried died or, or something. Uh, yeah, it is now Lord Paramount Harlan. And he... You know, likes us ish. Had her head ripped off by Balin Botley. Oh no! Your poor wife. Your poor wife. Why did it? Why did he rip her head off? That's horrible. So Rhaegar is turning out pretty well. He's ambitious and brave, which is really nice. And rowdy, of course. So maybe better to have a martial education. But look at his diplomacy already. It's pretty fantastic. So. We're going to keep that going. We're going to get him to have better diplomacy than that, which is great. Now, Aegon of the Vale, I'm thinking we go for, like, stewardship. We haven't had a stewardship character just yet. I don't want him to have military, <laughs> obviously, because if he has military, um, he could mount a rebellion quite nicely. And we don't want that. We don't want that. I think it's time to pass High Crown Authority this might be a little bit scary for some of the lords and might cause a faction or two but i think it's time i think it's time oh my these <laughs> the iron islanders just just can't give it up can they can't give it up let's try and sway him no let's send him a poem send you a poem a work about legacy bro there you are enjoy now let's sway him. <laughs> I've just realized we are at glorious splendor level. Nearly about to get fabled as well, which is fantastic. But it's just nice to see the word glorious there because 
You know, as many of you know on the channel, that's my favorite word. <laughs> Every time a Targaryen is born, the gods toss a coin on one side greatness and on the other side madness. And it seems that Rhaegar is the very picture of madness. No. <laughs> No, Rhaegar, no. I mean, he's not turned into a lunatic or anything just yet. Um, he's wrathful. That's that's not too bad, you know. And we've got another son, and we're going to call him Makar this time. And this time, we are going to educate him as well. And he's going to be the military genius behind these boys. Behind the diplomacy and the stewardship comes the swordman. So let's see what happens. So time to hold court once again. Let us hear what our glorious people have to say. An ancient figure approaches the throne. It's 71. He's not that ancient. My lord, I'm a genealogist. And you're aware you're of noble origin. Yeah, obviously. However, noble is not quite the same as divine or mythical. I desire to write a scroll which shall trace your complete lineage back to the dawn of history. Um, Yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. I'm not going to lie, bro. Please do that. I am faced with Baron Brune's sad eyes. King, this boy, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jaslyn Bywater could deal with it. My lord. So now we've got Lord Estamont, the paramount of the uh, Stormlands. Before the court is underway, my master of lords pulls me aside. To my surprise, he is brandishing a garish nose ring. <laughs> what? My lord, there will be so many attending your court. I know you are somewhat challenged in remembering every face and from whence it hails. I propose a solution. We require all at court to wear dress which includes a local style recognizable to all. He foists the garter at me. For those without clear regional fashions, I've taken the liberty of hiring a tailor who can suggest some new traditional garb. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? <laughs> um, no, I, I think we're going to go for the diplomacy lifestyle and the court grandeur. I, I remember faces, bro. My diplomacy is so good. I remember all the faces. All the faces. And now... We have it. So straight down. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with the children. And then that'll mean that our children get a lot better um, over time as well. Which is fantastic. After a few days, the genealogist Gaiman returns. He unfurls a long scroll enough to encircle one of my provinces. My high septum trips over it slightly as the unfurled end rolls to my throne's foot. I have here the truth of your origins, my lord. <laughs> Today we unveil a great history. Standing before us is King Aegon, son of Prince Rhaegar of the Iron Throne. Sired by the fearful King Aerys, the Mad King of the Iron Throne. Fruit of the loins of King Jaehaerys II of the Iron Throne. Son of the remarkable King Aegon V, the unlikely of the Iron Throne. Child of King Makar of the Iron Throne. <laughs> a few eyelids around the court begin to droop. Um, yeah... Uh, this thrills more than any ballad. I am the on the edge of my throne. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, we love it. We love it. I mean, we knew all that already, but <laughs> okay. So now we are a fabled dynasty. Almost going up. Well, we're going up towards legendary now. We're also nearly a paragon of virtue, and we're also getting up to being a living legend. And we're only 33. What a king this guy has. I hope we can get a good, you know, sort of a name for him by strengthening the bloodline or consecrating the bloodline. When we become religious icon, oh yeah, we've got a couple of levels to go. Then we can consecrate the bloodline and I'm sure we'll be known as the holy or the great or something like that. We are a glorious, glorious leader. So Prince Duran, our uncle, has actually just died. So we're going to make Lord Willis of the Reach our hand of the king. He is a very powerful man in these lands. So I'm going to take him as the king. I think that's the best uh, as the hand of the king. I think that's the best option. A very powerful nation. Look, 33,000 men down there, which is kind of obscene. So much more than anyone else. You know, even um, Dawn doesn't have as many men as them. So it's good to keep them on, on side. We are a very stable realm right now, though. And Rhaegar has come of age. And he is a grey eminence and a trained fighter. Pretty nice. And he's not a lunatic just yet. So apparently he has the madness. But it's just not showing itself just yet. But look at those diplomacy stats. That is fantastic. Now I think it is time 
to find your wife. And we'll probably, yeah, we'll go for the reach again. My cousin, Prince Lara. That might be the one to go for. She is in line for succession, but not quite. I think Adrienne is more in line for succession. Or than, uh, yeah, than anyone else. Prince Vorkan just needs to die. So, yeah, let's go for that. And then hopefully we can uh, get Dawn as well. <laughs> Glorious. Let's not train the squire anymore. Uh, and let's uh, knight uh, Rhaegar as well. So now he is a knight. Fantastic. Glorious. So we're at a tourney and it's time to joust. The excitement is palpable. Fool, you fool! My opponent teeters in his saddle, squeezing onto his mount as for dear life. Victory is mine! Let's go! Come on, the boys. Come on, the boys. It was a thrilling tilt. We've got to win. We've got to win. Uh, so, now... <laughs> We're jousting against a maester. <laughs> in his robes. <laughs> I'm going to bet on myself, I think. <laughs> yeah, obviously we won. He's literally just a maester. Now we have some lowborn hedge knight. And he's actually quite good. But we do have some very good prowess. So we're going to bet on ourselves again. Ooh. The weight of a mountain slams into my chest, shattering my vision into a thousand fragmentary. So much pain. Oh, you. Ah, oh, we lost. We lost. But anyway, at least we beat a maester, hey? <laughs> so, guys, well, I think our line is pretty successful. We have regained the Targaryen dynasty, the Targaryen line. There are loads of Targaryens now in the line. Everyone loves us as well, which is fantastic. And on top of that, you know, Princess Daenerys is in line for the Westerlands. That is definitely something that we could try and manipulate if we wanted to. Uh, in terms of the reach over here as well. Uh, Loras is married to Prince Danis. So that's something as well. So we've got another alliance there. And then down in the south in Dawn. Um, you know, Lord Paramount. So if we go down here. We're in line over here with our heir, Prince Rhaegar. And of course, on top of that, we've got our other son. Uh, Lord Paramount Aegon of the Vale on the throne of the Vale. Very, very nice. I don't think anyone's going to be able to bring any force to bear against us with that amount of alliances. We're allied with Dawn uh, and we're allied with the Vale. And of course, you know, the Reach would help us as well. So <laughs> I really don't think we are in any threatening position right now. No one's in a faction. Everyone loves us. No plots against us. Uh, even the prisoners love us. Look, 100 opinion and she's been in prison for years. <laughs> We've got a uh, high crown authority. We're nearly about to get to absolute crown authority. Um, and yeah, we're in a very stable situation now. There's not that much to do, uh, really. But if you do want to see another episode of this, I know this wasn't as action-packed as the first, but it was nice to see King Aegon come of age and survive the threats against him early on and to become such a bold and courageous and diplomatic leader that he has become. I think he's been a fantastic leader, honestly. Stabilize the realm completely. Um, a good name for him would be King Aegon the Pacifier or something like that. The Peacemaker. Something like that so a very good king but yes if you want to see me play Rhaegar Targaryen guys a hundred likes on this video would be fantastic and that would really boot me into gear to play Rhaegar and I can let you know Rhaegar is a very very difficult start so it should be very fun but anyway guys thank you very much for watching it's been a pleasure as always please like and subscribe it really does help the channel out and I will see you all again on the next video